was goody you know what i'm saying look ufl drop new gameplay core gameplay part one so there's probably gonna be a part two maybe even part three but but to find out in this ufl journey number three now listen ufl supposedly supposed to be the ea sports killer right so are we hoping for this yes because we want competition you get me so hopefully it finds a way to get in that football game sphere to where people will want to play either ufl ea sports fc which is about to be released in the coming months ea sports fc 24 is a new game no more fifa so it's between those and then we know eFootball has been garbanzo like it's not as cheesy the animations are ugly the graphics are ugly that's the problem with ea or pez but let's see core gameplay boom jagged jagged ufl hmm okay that's some solid graphics Dominoes. Hmm. Journey. Oh, let's see that tackle right there. Cause that's something. The animation. Clean. Lands right to the other teammate. Three kicks. Oh, that ball's floating slowly. Всем привет. Hello, everyone. Today we'll talk about core gameplay. I'm joined by two cool game designers. Introduce. So is this game releasing this year? That would be wondrous if it is. Wow. Selves, guys. Hi, my name is Dennis, and I'm Ilya. Awesome. I managed to get my hands on the current build of UFL, for the first time, by the way. So I'll be playing the game and asking the guys regarding the game in general and the things I see on the screen. Hmm. Another thing I should mention straight away, all football players you will see on the screen this time are fictional. Okay. We have to remove real players for this film due to certain legal requirements. Yeah, that's the tough part, and a lot of people like to play with the Holland or Mbappe or all these real players, right? So these guys, the legal requirements, all these things that really matter. And when it gets split up to different companies, it will ruin the experience of football. That's why EA has most of the licensing and stuff. I really hope that multiple games can have licensing of the same thing. So like multiple people can have licensing to, for example, Manchester United, and it's not like split up, you know what I'm saying? Because then UFL might be great gameplay and all this stuff, but you're playing with Ibappe instead of Mbappe, you know what I'm saying? Or you're playing with you're playing with rabbit instead of rabio you know what i'm saying stuff like that like i want to play with the real players most people want to play with the real players you get me so we'll see Airmans. in ufl there will be real players no one fictional but in journey uh we use non-existing footballers okay so but in, oh, in journey, journey uh we use non-existing football oh, so i wonder what journey is uh, don't worry everything will be good in the game okay Let's okay. go. Yeah. Okay, okay. Guys, I heard that both of you have some cyber sports background and you are masters of football simulation games. Okay. Is that really so? I'd love to hear more about that. What are your pro cyber sports achievements? I started in 2007. I was selected for the world championship several times in those years. Hmm. Ilya, well, what about your achievements? I started playing significantly later due to my age. My career was more or less close to the one of Dennis's, but I haven't been to the world championships. Unlike him, I don't even <laughs> yeah, have a theory. Yeah, it's just funny because none of this is the core gameplay yet, but Radical <laughs> try to give backstory. <laughs> I dived into the development world quite a long time ago, but I just now started to realize that pleasing different types of players, Ooh. creating a game Ooh. that fits many user requirements is an extremely complicated task. That's very true, trying to make everybody satisfied with the game. Now, some people do like the cheese jam pape and the jam omarions, alomarions, like in FIFA, like they like that cheese run down the line garbage. But some people really like tiki taka quick passing, quick reactions, which I think is obviously better because that's required with more skill, not with this pace abuse, you know what I'm saying? But these guys, I don't know how they're gonna set it up, how they're gonna make the pace proper, how they're gonna make the dribbling, is it gonna be responsive, all those type of things, you get me. 
There are so-called casuals. People but I do think the game is going to be a bit more arcadey and like FIFA is not like real realistic because the more realistic it is the more slow it will be and fifa is stuck in between trying to make it realistic but then making it more delayed and unresponsive and then trying to also still make it arcade which you have to pick one choose one you get me like play once a week with friends and don't even try to launch it online mode and there's a totally different oh. group that grinds for several hours every day uh, oh yeah. that was a good attack they play for several hours a day and obviously they have completely different demands usually people are unhappy with the gameplay due to their super high expectations you think so? people expect that the technology makes it possible to create the most realistic football now yeah. Here we are Whoa, at was Ilya's... that a Rabona? Was that a Rabona? Hold up. Oh, it was a Rabona. That was clean. Here we are at nice. Ilya's workstation. Now I'll have to beg Ilya to show me what they're working on, because the developers are usually reluctant to share any raw materials with me. Passes. Ilya, let's talk about the passing system. Uh, Let's start with the basics to begin with. What types of passes are there in UFL, besides the simple two-meter pass? Uh, if we start listing them, we won't finish by dawn. There are that many of them? Really? Okay, name at least five. We can't stay here and finish by dawn. Oh, so it looks like there's dawn. going to be a variety of passing in this game. On. Basically, it's the foundations, the low pass, the high pass, the through pass. Everything else is variations of these passes, whether it's a powerful pass, a strong high, or a throw ball. How does the game understand which way and to whom you want to send the pass? There is no secret here. We check their general direction and see where the footballer is moving or to what angle the user moves their D-pad. Okay. What type? You know, back, I remember seeing the last gameplay and then there was one overpowered cross. I was seeing where they would cross it across the pitch to like one of the wingers and it was just perfect on the money. So hopefully that has been fixed, but it will only be OP when you actually play the game. You get me? Of passes are mostly dependent on footballer skills, where individual footballer skills most important. I mean, anyone can give a simple two meter pass. And that's why it depends mm. on the difficulty of a pass. Gotta add some net physics there two-meter pass there. The game's not finished, and that's course. why it depends on the difficulty of a pass and also um, for instance how difficult it is to receive a ball everything is like in real football the more technical the pass is the more demanding it is of the personal skills of the footballer this game definitely looks playable for sure and it will definitely improve over time and really be a competitor for sure for sure but like the passing right there sometimes you'll just see the animations where like they pass it and they, they just freeze like there's certain things that needs to be smoothened out but you know what i'm saying it, all in due time how do you implement passes in terms of animation physics do you also use uh, motion capture like the other teams motion of course and after that we measure certain degrees and height of the pass hmm. we count centimeters roughly speaking a pass at one height or another a chest pass a header with a foot a one touch strong or low what yeah. type of uh, whole lot tackles of are there in the ufl everything that exists in real life we also have in the ufl this is an active tackle when you put your foot out and take the ball. Mm -hmm. Passive Ooh, when you just run. Up. This is an active Boy, where's the tackle? tackle when you put your foot out and take the ball. Nobody tackled there, mm -hmm. but it was a nice passive like when Messi. you just run to the ball, collect it, then go on with it. Sliding tackles, basically everything and anything else you haven't thought of. Mm. Being a game designer, I wanted to tell more about it, but I won't reveal my secrets yet. Mm. Which tackle is generally the most difficult to design and develop, and what are the issues? The most difficult thing for us is the passive tackle, when the ball is taken very close from an opponent. The main reason is that several different mechanics work together after such a tackle. Mm. It's harder to set up what comes next with passive tackles if it's going to be dribbling or something else. When it's an active tackle, you just kick the ball far and then go into dribbling. The same goes for sliding tackles. You kick the ball, Damn, kick the ball hey, is that, far, that? and then dribbling. Like Vieira on the the pitch, same goes for sliding tackles. You kick the ball, stand up, and run. But in passive, everything is more complicated. Okay, boys, let's talk about progress.
How would you assess the path you have taken from the starting point to the current moment? Oh, that's difficult. I can say that when we take on improvements, everything gets much better. But again, when we start adjusting other mechanics, we find other issues in those we finished recently. Yeah, yeah. game development is very, very tough. It's tough, man. Like, there's a whole bunch of things you have to just keep adjusting because there's going to be many bugs. But when you have a billion dollar company like an EA, it definitely makes it much easier versus these guys are just starting up they started since like 2016 it's already been six seven years doing this and it's almost ready but that's why it takes so long but hopefully they release a solid game at least just a solid base and they can build on it over time to where people can still play it and enjoy it so it takes really a lot of iterations <clears throat> to polish the materials to perfection sounds like there's a touch of perfectionism in it you're never satisfied with the results and always see some way to make further improvements well, no. Sometimes we are satisfied when we have done something, but later, when we switch to another mechanic, we find some problems in what was done before. Maybe you're too focused and not seeing properly, and so then you forget about it for a while, and after a break, you really see it from a different angle. Ooh, whoa, whoa! This looks like you can start you spamming skill moves and do some elite. And, uh, this dude did a, a Burba spin? For a break, you... And then a Rabona. Really see it that is a crazy. different angle. But the generated power was nuts. Yo, hopefully you can score some elite goals in this game. I mean, there is no perfectionism. We understand that it's impossible to make the game completely perfect. There yeah. will always be some place for improvement. The world is not standing still. Technologies are always developing. Mm -hmm. It's impossible to make all mechanics perfect. But still, you can deliver a very good version. And that's what we're trying to do with the UFL release. Mm. Let's put it this way. Our mechanics may not be absolutely perfect, but they are solid. Earlier, they didn't work properly or even didn't work at all. And now, we don't have these problems. Okay. We've ensured our mechanics were perfectly well together. Yeah. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well together. Now, did he do a move there to dodge that tackle? Because, or is that auto? You know what I'm saying? Because he missed it. That was, that was very precise. Moved it right past. When we play in a football simulator, we expect to see real life mistakes oh, that there really occur. When we play in, this in a gummy, football man. simulator, wow. we expect ball to roll see finesse real life mistakes like that occur in normal football. But I wish you could do celebrations because I know that's like EA's thing where you could actually, I think it's like automatic celebrations right now. When they add celebrations, it just makes it, it's another level. That's what I think, or well, a lot, a big thing that separated EA from PES back in the day. When they added the celebrate on your own, it was crazy. Uh, like you do your own celebrations. That's, that's lovely. They add that in this, that's another bonus. When we see them, yeah, they look more like a bug and not part of the gameplay. Whoa. <laughs> They look more like a bug That's crazy. and not, not part of the gameplay. Damn, took a solid finish. <laughs> Can Everybody's uh, doing Rainbow Rainbow be successfully used during a match against a real person? It can. Everything regarding the goalkeepers is much more difficult than with outfield players. And what about long free kicks that go off the target? Ooh. On the volley. Okay, so that's that video. Like, to be honest, we got a little bit of information. We got a few gameplay clips here and there. It's looking pretty solid. The game, like, of course, there's still some minor animations that look a bit odd. But, like, think about it. Development in six years, they've just been trying to improve it. Hopefully, the game, like, the gameplay features as well. Because we can talk about all gameplay, too. But sometimes the gameplay can be okay. But if the game modes are amazing, you just enjoy the game better, too. Like, if this has solid game modes, I mean solid. Wow. Solid type of game modes. You will want to play it more like but some of these like EAs right now the game modes are just yeah there's some not really decent like the game modes have been the same since like if we talk about pro clubs the same garbage we talk about ultimate team uh they've added like division rivals recently fought champions has been ruined and nerfed what other game modes career mode has not even changed since like fifa 15 but to be honest fifa 13's career mode was probably better probably fifa 09's career mode was better it's insane they don't change because that part doesn't give them money you get me but Pro clubs, they can find a way to make money off of that if they added so many things like how NBA 2K does it. Take a book out of their page. Like, come on, EA. Attention to detail. Know your personnel. 
goodness gracious, so garbage. But they can improve it if they if you imagine if you could just play with your friends in pro clubs and it was actually a fun thing. They just left it the exact same, so it just gets boring now. It's the same thing in pro clubs. If they merge pro clubs and Volta properly, where you use your one pro and you can play in the open field in the real on the real pitch and five aside, it would be lovely, but they don't do that. Ultimate team, shh. Hopefully UFL finds a way to add elite game modes. Maybe they even add a pro clubs type of thing in UFL. I know they're probably focusing on a, like a, a similar ultimate team type of aspect, but if they add a pro clubs type of thing to it, it will go crazy. Crazy, uh, I'm telling you, bro. But what do you guys think about this gameplay? Let me know in the comments. UFL gameplay right here, core gameplay, part one, more coming. I also have an insane player pick video right here. Be sure to check that out. And also I reviewed Raul right here. Be sure to check that out as well. And I most definitely out. Adios, amigos.